Hey guys, many of you have heard about the new coronavirus that's coming out of China, uh, out of the Wuhan city specifically. One of the things about this city is that this area, they eat a lot of exotic animals, uh, and these animals carry a lot of different type viruses. They've linked this particular virus to bats, uh, where this market actually sells snakes, crocodiles, bats, and other different type creatures, which, by the way, is against the law in China. This is where it's originated from. And this virus has gone from animal to human, which is not common, but something that does happen. The coronavirus, actually, the name comes from crown. And the virus itself is just a circular ball with spikes coming out of the ends. And so that is where the name comes. It's actually a cousin to SARS or MERS as well. Now, there have been over 3,000 confirmed cases in Wuhan, uh, a city of 11 million people. And so this is a pretty major thing. They've closed the city down. Now, at this point, there are over 3,000 confirmed cases. They have 5,000 people right now that are possibly infected with the virus. And over 80 people have died, which that has really increased over the past weekend and I'm sure we're gonna see more. Now, most of the deaths are coming from people that are 60, 70, 80 years old. About 70% of those people had pre-existing conditions. So these people have low immunity rates already. Their immune system is pretty low. And then of course it is uh, dangerous for especially infants and small children who are just developing their immune system. Now, one of the big problems with these numbers because we really don't know the exact numbers. Uh, but China is notorious for kind of keeping things close to the cuff. And two, it, they don't want to set off a public panic, which really has already transpired in China. And so that is one of the reasons why we need to be careful and concerned about watching what's going on over there. Uh, all the cases seem to be linked to Wuhan, uh, whether all around the world. There are five cases at this point right now in the U.S. Now, one of the big things about the coronavirus is it is a virus, and so antibiotics don't treat it. Uh, there is a two-week period where it can be an incubation period before symptoms start to show, and yet people can be contagious. So that's one of the dangers of this virus, is people are walking around thinking they're fine when they're actually spreading the virus. Uh, it does attack the lungs, and so it enters into the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. And that's one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot of people with masks on right now, but they're not covering their eyes. One of the problems with the mask is that they're not really that uh, effective. Uh, there's a lot of breathing areas on the side where things can get in. Uh, but one of the big things about wearing a mask, and it should be at least an N95 respiratory mask, uh, and then a lot of people are doubling up with a secondary mask that's disposable, is that it keeps your hands from touching the virus and then putting it to your mouth your nose and your eyes. And so that's one of the big things that is great about having the mask, uh, but yet it can penetrate through the sides. Now the coronavirus is not necessarily an airborne virus. Uh, it typically falls quickly to the ground or to other surfaces. The virus actually lives for up to five days on a surface, uh, whether it's on the floor, whether it's on a table, uh, it could be on a guardrail or handrail, it could be in a bathroom, it could be anywhere. And so making sure that you keep your hands washed, because what happens is people will touch that area that's infected, again, up to five days, and then they'll put their hands up to their mouth or their nose or they'll rub their eyes. And that's the way that they're getting this virus into their body. Now the symptoms of the virus are a cough, a fever, a lot of sneezing, and then you go into shortness of breath. And once that happens, you definitely need to seek medical attention. Uh, but then it goes into pneumonia. And then from pneumonia, it goes into kidney failure. And then from kidney failure to death. While China has identified this as a level one medical emergency, uh, the World Health Organization has not yet deemed this an emergency. And with that, there would be a lot of steps that would be taken uh, to keep these people and close borders and do more heavy screening uh, with people coming into different countries. Now, since there are no antibiotics that will treat a virus, uh, they're trying to develop a vaccination. Uh, it's gonna be at least three months before they can test it, and then it could be up to a year before they have a vaccination. SARS and MERS, which are also coronaviruses, have yet to have a vaccine. The way they're treating this is to treat the symptoms. Uh, if you are infected with the virus, uh, you know, if they need to treat you, they'll give you fluids. They'll take care of, uh, you know, your fever management. Uh, they could possibly give you different types of medication, oxygen, 
and mainly just monitor what's going on because they're wanting for your immune system to fight the disease or fight this virus. And that's the big thing. And a strong immune system should be able to take care of this virus without bad effects. So to keep this though into perspective, the flu kills tens of thousands of people every year here in the U.S. And so really while you know we want to keep our eye on it, we want to be somewhat concerned, uh, at this point right now it's not as big as it could possibly be. But the big thing about this video is to make sure that you are taking care of yourself and that you have supplies needed if it does spread to the U.S. Now unfortunately supplies are running out in China, uh, medical supplies, also their respirator mask. Uh, one thing that I would recommend is the N95 respirator mask, uh, but one of the problems is even that needs to be fitted to your face. Uh, my wife's an RN and she had a, an N95 and they came in and fit that so it would keep away any kind of contaminants that would come in and come out. And so whether you're infected with the virus or you're trying to protect yourself against the virus, uh, really having a mask that fits really well is important. Unfortunately, it is the Lunar New Year for China, and it's one of the busiest traveling times there. Uh, so millions of people are moving back and forth, but now a lot of cities have closed down, so schools are closed, and really the, the cities look like ghost towns. What's really unfortunate is the test that they're using that's a very fast test, uh, they're running out of it as well. Now one of the big questions is, is what do you do to keep from contracting the virus if it gets into your area? Uh, one of the big things is just treat it like a normal flu season. Uh, keep your hands washed. And this is from the CDC and also from the World Health Organization. Uh, you know, keep your hands, don't, if you touch an area, if you touch something, make sure that you don't put your hands up to your face, your nose, and your eyes. Now, one of the big problems that I'm seeing in China is they're having their face mask, but they're not having anything to protect their eyes. One of the things about the coronavirus is that it comes from droplets of moisture that come out of a patient or, or somebody that has the virus. And so this actually goes in, it attacks the lungs in particular. And so you want to keep yourself protected in that area and honestly you want to keep your eyes covered as well. Uh, another thing to do is to keep away from humans, other humans. Uh, that's a very important thing and if you are traveling or have traveled from China is to make sure you let everyone know that you need to take care of yourself for those two weeks to make sure that your symptoms don't start and that you have the virus. If you do have it you need to go and seek a medical attention as soon as possible and let them know that you think that that may be a possibility. Also guys, if you have beards or mustaches, it's best to go ahead and shave those off and that way the mask will fit properly to your face. Now there are a lot of different, even better masks. There are acrylic fronts on masks. Those would actually be better or even full gas mask or respirators. And so that would definitely give you more protection. Uh, but you know, it does go into an extreme measure when you start doing those kind of things. Wearing surgical gloves would also be good if you're out in public. And so one of the problems is, is a lot of people, they have to get supplies, they have to get out of the house. And if you do, you need to make sure that you're well protected. Now supplies that you might need on hand. Food is a big one. Uh, a lot of people in China now are quarantined to their living quarters. Uh, they have to stay at their home or their apartments or whatever for at least two weeks. And so make sure that you have plenty of food. Make sure your water supply is good. Uh, make sure you have toilet paper, which is a big one. Also having bleach, ethyl alcohol, which is 70% alcohol, really works well. Having wet wipes, uh, you know, hand sanitizers, keeping yourself clean. Because again, if someone coughs or sneezes and they have the virus, it can live up to five days on a surface. So if you put your hands on that surface and then reach up and touch your mouth, you can possibly contract the virus. You'll also wanna have basic medications and also definitely have the N95 mask and actually something that would even cover it and give yourself some cover. Uh, gloves, again, would be also something, especially the, just the clear or nitrile gloves or different type medical gloves to be able to wear. So guys, we don't know what's really gonna happen with this coronavirus. We're gonna watch and see. But again, guys, just having these things set aside, ready to take care of them, will put you way ahead in case there is some kind of epidemic or pandemic in your area. And if things get worse, we'll do an updated video as well. Guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider, one of the best resources on the web using many of the top names in the survival world. 
Uh, we upload one video exclusive to The Insider every week. I'll have a link down below in the description. Check it out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. of the virus are a dry cough, a wheezing, a cough, a dry cough, and then you begin to, uh, you, you're having a hard time getting, getting, okay. come on ambulance, and there's an ambulance going by here every day.